Hello and welcome to this overview of our Practical Accounts training app available on both Google Play and the App Store, whose aim is to impart practical accounting skills. Now we've got the app installed on this mobile phone. And normally after you have logged on, you should be starting on that screen. So this should be the main menu. Now when you get here, of course, you have done the logging on, you have signed on and so on. Now let's go to the home screen. Now here you find various facilities. Now, first of all, we'll look at the starting guide. This is basically typed text providing guidance about facilities available and how you can utilize them. So there are basics there, sign up, close login, set financial year, and so on and so forth. Now let's have a quick look. Okay, they're basically guides. Let's look at let's look at the chart of account structure, for example. Click that one. You scroll down, scroll down, and then you can see the text available explaining, providing some bit of explanation about what it is. Now you come to the main menu, you find various categories of information about the different modules about the different modules for example you click this one it's talking about the receipts and refund module it basically has recording forms now we go below that let's see let's try to scroll now these are the recording forms this is a, this is a guide about recording forms there's mention about VAT, about the different accounts, how to type in the amounts. Simply drag it up and down. Drag it up and down. And of course, our movement here may not be so fast because we are connecting through an app called SideSync to the actual device. And then you've got others at the bottom here. At the bottom here, we should be scrolling up because there are not too many. So there's a guide about printing in case the app freezes and then how to contact APA. After the starting guide, let's go back to our home menu. We'll look at the main menu. Now this is the main menu, has gives you access to the different modules with recording forms and the reports. Next to that, we've got business information. You enter, you, you enter the name of the business, the financial year of the business, you click update. Below that, we find uh, setting the financial year. Now, setting the financial year, does it start in July, April? You click the drop down and you select. After that, look at, look at, let's go to home. We'll look at setting the VAT rates. Default is 20% and 5%, which can be changed. We also look at the chart of account structure. Now, this one is uh, all the accounts and it's static. It's basically to guide you on where to locate the respective accounts. It can be expanded to display better. You pinch and zoom to display better and it can also be downloaded onto the actual device so let's use uh, pdf let's check with the pdf viewer and there we are now here it can be printed using the pdf viewer it can be downloaded on the phone and so on and so forth let's go back and then we also have practice, practice documents here. We've got about 285 documents, information about a particular business for practice purposes. You can expand it, pinch and zoom, and it can also be downloaded. It can also be downloaded onto the phone and then they are about printed. Now next, we'll look at, I think that's all about the features here. Then the profile down here is information you entered in. So let's go to the main menu. Now the main menu is access to various modules. Now we start with the dashboard, which is a very condensed set of financial statements. There's a profit and loss account and there's a balance sheet below. 
very condensed, very summarized to give a very quick overview of the business up to date. Below that, we've got a single journal, which is basically a form that provides you, provides two and two accounts, two accounts. You select the account to be debited, the account to be credited. And then below here, when you type the amount for 50, the negative amount is auto-generated. The narration, document number, the month is auto-generated and so on. After that, you save and next or save and close. Then next to that, we've got, we've got the multi-journal, which can be used to record transactions that don't have VAT and require more than more than five rows. It can give you up to 10. It can give up to 10. Let's have a quick look. And then for each one of them, we have got to select their respective account. And then you type the amount. Now this one doesn't generate any values at all. They've got to be entered manually and the difference has got to be a zero before it can save. Now take note that each of the recording forms has got a guide. You click that and the guide comes up. How do we use this form? Click OK and it closes. And next to that, we've got the chart of accounts. This one can be modified. Now, the one we saw earlier on is just static to give you a, an overall view of what it should look like. And here we can uh, customize. Now, this one, let's click this one and it's account number three. Its balance is summed up to get the figure for not one for the profit and loss account. And then here we type the account name. What kind of income should this be? Maybe it's drinks. Click that, click update, and then it appears there. Okay. Now next to that, let's see, periodic tasks checklist. This facility, now because periodic tasks are fairly many, this is used as a reminder. There is, okay, there's a business name up there. There's a period end date. And there's space to type the person, the name of the person who performed the task. And we've got uh, boxes for ticking what has been done and what hasn't been done. In case somebody is taking over from you, they need to know what is done and what, is, what hasn't been done. It can be printed out. And then this one gives us access to various reports. For example, this is a VAT return. You click that number 10 and we should end up on the VAT return. This should be the VAT return for the first quarter. Let's, let's go back. Okay, now let's go back again. And uh, now this is the year-end reports checklist. Well, these are the accounting schedules which should be available at the year-end. And uh, they also have uh, ticks. You tick to indicate what has been accomplished and what hasn't yet been accomplished. Now, whatever is ticked, you should be able to explain. You identify, you interpret, you explain. That's the whole idea. Much as we are saving the preparation time, you don't have to do it manually, but you should be able to explain what you're presenting to people. <clears throat> so here we've got about 76 reports in total about 76 reports in total now in case of any queries then they should be recorded on a separate sheet of paper they don't have to be entered into here now just like the other one you click this one and it takes you to the particular report that is k1 which is the data's summary and reconciliation okay think we've come to the end of the feature. Oh, at the bottom here, we've got transactions. Now let's utilize this one when it comes to transactions, since there are fewer transactions here. So this one displays the recorded transactions. That is in terms of serial number, the date, the fiscal month, fiscal quarter, narrations, document number, transaction number, amount, account name, VAT, and so on. And then they can be deleted as well. They can be deleted as well. 
Now let's get to the receipts. Let's get to the receipts. Let's get to the phone. Yeah, receipts and refund. Now basically these are recording forms. These are recording forms. They are buttons to recording forms. Now you got to start by selecting the appropriate VAT rate depending on the source document. If it's 20%, then more rows are generated. Now remember there's a guide on each and every recording form. There's a guide on each and every report. So that's why we say there's a bit of theory, some bit of explanation to help the learner to recap the knowledge they already have and uh, how is it twisted or adjusted in the practical environment. So these are basically recording forms. Now we move to purchases and refund. These are also recording forms. There's four of them. You select the appropriate VAT rate if it's T0, 0% VAT, and then you do the rest accordingly. Now, details on how to do the actual recording are available in a separate set of videos. This is just um, a quick overview. Next, we proceed to fixed assets. Forms for recording transactions regarding fixed assets. Select the 5%. And then we get the appropriate rows. Now you take realize that when we're recording, the app is indicating which transaction is going to be debited. Any information on the top row because of the DR is going to be debited to the general ledger. And if we select the equipment cost account, that's where it will be debited. If we select the vehicle's cost account, that's where the value will be debited. And of course, we said the amounts are semi-automatic in that if we typed 550 in there and the VAT rate is 5%, then the rest of the figures are computed to minimize the errors. And then, of course, here we select the paying account. Was it paid by cash, credit card? Assuming it was paid by credit card. Now, these accounts below here, they are not optional. If you determine that this transaction has got 5% VAT, then these two below are not optional. Although it indicates which one is to be credited, which one is to be debited, is it in the general ledger? Now this one in particular is found in both the VAT ledger and the general ledger. And then of course you type the narration and uh, so on. So those are, the, those are the forms in the fixed assets module. Then we've got the payments module got a number of uh, payment forms. We've got the loans and credit card module, all these are buttons. <clears throat> and then we've got um, modules for creditors and debtors. Now these are forms for recording purchases on credit, purchases on credit. Click one of them and uh, you determine the VAT rate. By default, it's a T92. But then you go to tell the system this is a T5 transaction and the appropriate rows are generated all to simplify and speed up the recording process. All these are recording forms. And then we have a quick look at debtors here. These are recording forms for transactions with debtors. You select 20% and then the number of rows is increased. Of course, the the debtor's control account is, is compulsory. Whatever end, ends up on a debtor's account has got to be duplicated onto the debtor's control account. And next, we're going to look at reports. Now, reports are at the very end. Reports are at the very end. We've got period reports. Now, period reports, let's, let's have a look here. Period reports. Period reports, we got <coughs> VAT returns. VAT returns, this is what it should look like. Scroll and you pinch to display more information. Remember, there is a guide on each of these reports. There's a guide on which each of these reports. Now, this is a monthly reconciliation. This is creditors reconciliation. The reconciliation is automated. There's a guide here as well. Now let's have a look. <clears throat> let's 
have a look at let's look at the monthly reconciliation for cash and bank accounts now let's see we've got a red red indicating there's a difference between the balance on the account and the bank statement balance bank statement balance should be recorded in the blue cell and if the two agree then the red color will disappear so there's a period reports about 15 of them <clears throat> and then we have year end reports now year end reports they are class they are in about 17 classifications this is a tax return extract then below here we've got financial statements let's look at the profit and loss account <coughs> profit and loss account we pinch to see the data it's showing a profit of 18,117 it's showing figures for the previous year it's showing the change in amount and it's showing the percentage change now remember there's a guide to each of these and each of these reports is printable <clears throat> now these year end reports now here of course we've got to click on that button and then before we access the actual report uh, it's generating the data we entered a lot of information so this is the final trial balance final trial balance and of course it can be printed as well <clears throat> now let's, let's see let's go back to the year end reports checklist now the, the year end reports we've looked at are all displayed here they are all displayed here you simply click that link to access the report so we got uh, they're categorized in a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s you after after you have entered the ticks you've got to save you click you click you tick a report that you understand you've analyzed you have interpreted and you feel is ready for presentation to either tax officials to your supervisors to your bosses or auditors you only tick when it's ready when when you have finalized some reports need reconciliation figures like l1 let's have a look at l1 so L1, that is what is generated. And normally, this bank statement balance has got to be typed in. So before it's typed in, it's blue, it's blank, and it's showing a difference. And after it's typed in, well, that difference should disappear. And of course, at the bottom here, we can click to access the actual bank account. And then we go back there. We go back to our home. We were at the year end reports checklist. And then, yeah, this is it about the year end reports checklist. So that brings us to an end. Now let's have a look at this balance sheet quickly. Now remember, we mentioned that each of the reports has got a guide, <clears throat> some brief information about that report okay some brief information about that report and each of the reports can be printed let's look at this comparative year-end comparative trial balance it's a big report it's a big report okay we try to condense and try to see more information and you click print pdf it should take us to this facility here here we can select we say we want to save as a pdf and then it takes us to the appropriate place that's a pdf and thereafter we can print so that brings us to the end of this quick overview and in case you've got any issues please do not hesitate to contact us thank you so much